Well, I'm Jason Gress. Um, I do a lot of different things. <laughs> what I do for a job is I teach visual art at Vancouver Island University in Nanaimo. I'm also a practicing artist and have been for about 20 years or so. Um, yeah, I've been teaching here at VIU also for 16 years. Um, my art practice and, and also my teaching practice is mostly in the sort of three-dimensional sculpture kind of area of things. Um, I've done everything from sort of larger public art to very small kind of miniature things. I like kind of the broad spectrum. Um, my whole life, I've just been interested in materials. My dad was a carpenter and I would often just muck about on the job site, nailing pieces of wood together when I was really young. And um, I guess that never really went away, that curiosity for, for sort of putting things together and manipulating materials. What does a fine craft show mean to you? So I think first and foremost, I think, um, you know, we have this distinction between sort of fine art and craft. And this is something that's kind of been going on. And, and there's no winning that argument, by the way. Um, there's lots of crossover in the contemporary world, especially with the rise of maker culture. Um, but you have to remember that sort of at one point in time, um, there was no such thing as an artist, right? So you had craftspeople and, and those were in effect the artists, right? And those craftspeople sort of morphed into artists in, in the kind of Western idea of, of what an artist is. So they've always been very interconnected, right? Um, so I think in terms of, you know, the actual show and, and what a fine craft show means, I think it's a great opportunity to kind of show that um, showcase the diversity of people that are, are makers, people that like to make things, right? Sometimes you have people who call themselves artists, but they also work in craft and people who are craftspeople who also work in art. So there is lots of crossover. So I think it's great to actually have a craft focused show and give an opportunity to some people who maybe lean a little bit more into that craft and don't think of themselves as artists, but you know, they're, they're really making art in, and craft on that kind of boundary. And I think it's also uh, a great opportunity to just talk about this idea of sort of, you know, craft really is, is art with function. Most, most craft has, has some kind of functionality to it, right? So, you know, it's, it's great to live a life where you're surrounded by beautiful functional objects. And I think a craft show can really sort of highlight and accentuate that apart from something that is just completely aesthetic, right? Often a good craft uh, based object will have excellent aesthetics, um, but often has that functionality too. So I think it's a, just a great opportunity overall to present, um, to present an opportunity to have a conversation around, around fine craft and art. What are you looking for in the artwork submitted? Um, so they should choose work that speaks to them, right? Often makers will make a variety of work. And if you're you're sort of a practicing craftsperson, you'll have a lot of projects going on um, at any given time. So first and foremost, uh, choose the work that speaks to you and, and put that forward. Sometimes um, it's hard to discern what your best work is. So I like to try and suggest um, to my students and, and I guess to people applying to the craft show in this case, is that you should try to put um, your, yourself in the place of the viewer. So how will the viewer uh, view your work, right? So if it is something that has a utility, um, will they be able to see the functionality and the ergonomics in that? And will they also be able to see how you've put a design flair and sort of beautiful aspects to it? Um, also thinking about um, if, if you're trying to choose between one piece or the other, um, really look at some of those small details, right? I would, my, my personal aesthetic is I like to air to things that are a little more simple they seem to have the ability to sing a little bit uh, louder than things that are really uh, complicated. So if you have a piece maybe that is a little on the simpler side, but you really feel like you, you've kind of hit the mark in terms of that beautiful simplicity, um, maybe you know consider consider submitting that piece. I, that would be my, my, as a juror, my personal recommendation. It doesn't have to be, you know, maybe your style is to have things be super decorative, um, but be open to the idea of, of kind of really looking at it and picking that one that maybe sings out to the, to the viewer. Oh, just something that demonstrates um, your, sk your skill and your mastery of of a material or, or a technique, right? So again, if you have a couple pieces that you're just trying to decide between, um, but you know that one was particularly difficult to carve and that's kind of evident in the finished piece, then maybe um, show, put that forward as, as your best work. What should artists be careful of when submitting artwork? 
First and foremost, um, my understanding is that there'll be a sort of a digital submission of images. So make sure your, your artwork is visible. You know, that before you make sure it looks good, make sure we can actually see what we're looking at, right? If I remove background noise, you know, I don't want to see your cat in there. I don't want to see, I love, I love cats and dogs, but I don't need to see them in your artwork submission. Um, so really get in, get in close on your object. And if it's something that has multiple sides that are different, then, then send a couple of details of that. So one piece to kind of, or one, one image to get the whole sort of object and then show us some, some details if it's important. If it's something that both sides are the same, then probably not relevant. Um, but do the best you can with, with the lighting that you have. Um, you don't have to have fancy, you know, really fancy lighting setup. Sometimes daylight is really good on a sort of a diffused, semi-cloudy, not super sunny day. Just take it outside if you can't quite get the lighting right. There's lots of tutorials you can find online for setting up some really easy lighting with kind of available lamps and things like that. So again, you don't have to have a super professional setup, but we need to be able to see what we're looking at and, and put, put your best foot forward in terms of that as well. Show your work in, in its best light, no pun intended. Make sure it's dry <laughs> and, and finished, right? You'd be amazed at how um, sometimes people will bring stuff in and the varnish is still wet or, um, you know, there's some aspect of it that isn't, isn't sort of dry or, or sort of completely finished. And one other thing that I'll bring up is, is make sure you're not, you're not appropriating something culturally, right? So if you don't belong to a specific community or group, then don't pull imagery or themes from that group, right? Leave that to the people that belong to that group. Um, you know, and if you're going to invest all your time, energy and materials into making these objects, um, you know, why, why invest in something that's going to end up being problematic, right? So have your own ideas, originality, and don't, don't culturally appropriate. You can, you can quote me on that. What experiences do you hope artists will walk away with? Uh, well, I guess the main thing is some satisfaction um, that they've just, even if they, they don't get accepted to the show, just some satisfaction and feel good about themselves that they've actually put their work out there in the world, right? So as craftspeople and artists, part of the whole point is we want to we want to put our work out into the world and have a conversation with people or have people enjoy and engage with the things that we do and the things that we make so just take satisfaction in that um, first and foremost and then um, hopefully they'll get some valuable feedback about their work so even if their work doesn't get accepted um, then we'll give them some pointers perhaps on what they could do better better documentation the work was great but we couldn't see aspects of it that kind of thing um, or if you do get accepted, um, then, you know, some feedback from people who view the show, that kind of thing. So it's always good, again, to kind of have that, that sort of loop of, of us as makers to, to sort of hear how people are responding. And of course, the last one is prizes. So I'm hoping people walk away with some prizes. <laughs> what do you feel is the jury's responsibility in a fine craft show? Well, at the very basic level, I think it's to sort of assess the quality, uniqueness, of, of the, the craft work itself, right? Um, and we have this benefit from our side, you know, when you submit work, you don't see the, the sort of totality of what's being submitted. We're on the other side of the fence or curtain or whatever barrier, and we actually see this range. So we have this ability to um, kind of create, look and say, okay, well, this is the strongest work. This work needs some more development. And we can kind of uh, place your work or look at your work within that sort of context and, and um, continuum, which is really good. Um, and then, you know, also, um, it's, it's our job to sort of obviously select on merit. So looking for those things that really um, set one piece apart, uh, whether it's quality, manipulation of materials, those kind of things. And we also are kind of charged with this idea that we have to set aside our kind of personal biases. Um, you know, I might, might love a certain style, color, material, or whatever, um, but that might not be the strongest work, even from that, that individual. So I've got to kind of look at things objectively and, and try and really sort of, I, when I mark my students' work, I talk about it kind of like as a soup. So it's not like I have this, these 10 criteria. I do have criteria, but then in the end, there's sort of like an extra little pinch of something or something that can, can push, um, you know, someone's work um, to a different level in, in my interpretation or in my mind. So I'm looking for those little extra things as well. And then also um, it's our job, I think, to kind of set the standard for what applying to like a show like this should mean uh, for people applying, right? So, um, it, you know, we're kind of charged with making sure that the best work possible gets into the show. And then also built within that though, is to uh, present some opportunities for 
when we see promising um, work coming from, from younger or new, new people new practicing craftspeople, it's important to kind of recognize that maybe you're kind of torn between a, you know, a professional artist piece and then someone that's emerging or a craftsperson's piece. And it's important to give those opportunities because those can often, often be confidence boosting for people and, um, you know, sort of start them on a, on a journey to doing more, more things with their craft. Because you're working in the visual arts program and you're dealing with people who are emerging artists, is there anything that might encourage them to take part in something like this? It's really, you know, it's a really accessible opportunity. And if you have any, have had any dealings in the past with the Ladysmith um, Waterfront Gallery or, or the, um, the Arts Council, um, it's a great community, right? So there's lots of support there. There's lots of opportunity for mentorship and feedback. So it's sort of like a ladder when, when you're talking about developing your craft or your your artwork, anything kind of in the maker realm is that you have to kind of start somewhere and these low barrier opportunities are a great place to start. You really have nothing to lose. Um, it's sort of a silent jurying process. And, you know, um, you're not, it's not gonna be advertised. You didn't get in the show, right? Like it's not gonna be posted on YouTube or something. It's like, and you will, you know, as a juror, I feel like if, if I don't, you know, someone isn't successful in getting into the show, then I'll give them a bit of feedback sort of to look at what they would need to do next time, right? So um, you really have nothing to lose and um, that feedback is actually gonna be valuable. So going through the process, it's like when, when you're a writer, they say like, you're gonna be rejected like 20 times for each time you get accepted to something, right? So you just have to start the, the process of like, okay, I'm over it now. I didn't get in, but I have some feedback or, or I got in great and you can start building on that. So there's, there's, it's really a no lose situation.